and hopefully it releases from the pan. It released. All right, are you ready? I'm really scared. I have a feeling it might stick. Thank you so much for clicking on this video today. We are making three delicious, almost dessert-inspired Mediterranean breakfast ideas for you to have, to have throughout the week, to meal prep, to treat yourself to something special on the weekend or whatever suits you. These are just some ideas to have to spice up breakfast, make it a little bit more interesting, make sure you're getting in protein, fats, and carbs, all the delicious goodness that we need. I hope you enjoy this video and the delicious recipes we're gonna make. I will jump into the first two recipes and then we'll meet back here for the third recipe. Starting with the blueberry lavender cheesecake chia pudding. I know it sounds like a lot, but it's so incredibly simple to make. So starting with the chia pudding, all you need is to combine in a blender some milk, some blueberries. I love wild blueberries because they have a very high concentration of that blueberry flavor. And then some yogurt. I'm using some flavored blueberry lavender coconut yogurt here from Kalina, but you could just use plain yogurt, just whatever yogurt you like. Some lavender and some honey. Just blend that up into a nice creamy milk consistency. Pour it into a jar and then add in your chia seeds shake it to combine it and then throw it in the fridge for up to about two to three hours to set or you can even do it overnight and this is where you can stop just there make this delicious blueberry lavender chia pudding but if you want to just take it up a notch and really have some fun with your breakfast let's move on to the cheesecake layer which is the best part i'm not gonna lie so we're gonna take some soaked cashews as you can see there's a difference between a regular cashew and a soaked cashew it grows to be very big and very soft and it's going to give that cheesecake consistency that creamy thick good just texture vanilla extract lemon juice and lemon zest to bring in that tangy cheesecake cream cheese feel some coconut oil to set it and then some more wild blueberries to really pack on that blueberry lavender flavor Lots more honey because we need some sweetness and a lot of coconut yogurt. Coconut yogurt is also going to really help set it and make it a nice, thick, luxurious cream cheese texture and some lavender essential oil. You can use lavender essential oil in the chia pudding too to make it easier if you have that. Then I have some graham crackers and I just crumbled them, crumbled them, <laughs> crumbled them up pretty simply to layer them in the middle just to give it a little bit more of a cheesecake vibe, if you know what I mean. So I'm using half of the jar to fill with the chia pudding, adding in the crumbled graham cracker, and then pouring in the set chia pudding, by the way. Then I'm pouring in the freshly made cheesecake batter. There's gonna be a little bit left over, so have fun and create some other fun recipes or just store the cheesecake batter in a jar and just eat straight uh, cheesecake. You can also use it like cream cheese spread on toast and stuff like that once it's set. So I'm just jarring these all up, putting the lid on them, and then putting them in the fridge for at least overnight, like six to eight hours or longer. So basically this is the next day and the cheesecake layer has set. The chia pudding has definitely firmed up even more. So you will see that the texture is unbelievably thick. I mean, that's my favorite part. The lavender is so strong. It tastes so irresistible. It's full of fiber and healthy fats and some protein and just, it's gorgeous. Who doesn't want to eat a gorgeous breakfast? These are so fun to meal prep. You can even stock them in the freezer. Next, we are making some fudgy baked raspberry chocolate oats. So in a blender, all you need to do is add the oats, the baking powder and salt, just a pinch of salt, vegan or any kind of protein powder you like, ground flaxseed, it acts as like the egg to the batter, some milk, vanilla extract, and a whole banana. So this banana was actually pretty large and so I probably should have skimmed out on a little bit of it, I'm not gonna lie, and some honey, just for a little bit added extra sweetness. Blend that all up and also the vegan protein powder that I use is so delicious. It's one of my favorite protein powders of all, but it does change the texture a little bit of this recipe. 
Oh, and check out this chocolate. How incredibly cool is it? It's called Ruby Chocolate. It's pink and beautiful, and I thought it would pair so well with this baked raspberry oat fudgy goodness. So I'm just adding some chocolate into the middle of the oat batter because if you can't have chocolate for breakfast, then you're not living. <laughs> and then I'm dolloping on some raspberry chia jam, which is just literally heated up raspberries and chia seeds, and then it's stored in the fridge to thicken up and become kind of like a jam consistency. And I am dolloping that on top and kind of swirling it around to make a very pretty design and sprinkling on a little bit more of this ruby chocolate which is super fruity bake it in the oven and there you have it these beautiful easy super gooey super fudgy dense baked oats okay recipe number three i thought i'd do a little bit of a talk through but you guys know i can't get in my kitchen and cook with you guys unless i have a drink in hand last video it was a glass of wine this video we're gonna do a simple chai latte. I have been making all kinds of fun lattes lately. I think it's been up on my like TikTok and Instagram. I've made a bunch of different matcha lattes using like different flavored teas and all that stuff. So I'm trying to get creative with my lattes because I love black coffee first thing in the morning, but midday or mid morning, I want a little tiramisu, a little pick me up. So I've been trying out all these different little concoctions later in the morning. So I just thropped up my milk, literally. I've tried to search for a cheaper option than this, but nothing compares to Oatly oat milk. It's the best, most frothiest. So I have two massive ice chunks here, going in with just some simple brewed chai. Seriously, three ingredients. I love using chai because it has so much flavor and spiciness that I don't even need a sweetener. Did we see how perfect proportions that was? Oh, that's so satisfying. Usually I spill or I don't put in the right ratios, but that was the perfect ratio. I think this is one of my favorite drinks of all time. Let's preheat the oven to 350. And for the final recipe of this video, we are going to be doing a citrus yogurt cake. I'm so excited for this. So we're gonna start off with the dry ingredients. I have two cups of ground almond meal here. You wanna get the super fine. This cake is definitely a very dense, crumbly cake. In the sense, it's not gonna crumble apart. It's just got that texture of, you know, almond flour and the other ingredient, which is semolina. Semolina is a cornmeal type of flour. It's like a texture similar to cornbread almost, and it's just a hearty cake to have, and that's why I like it in the morning as like a breakfast cake to go with your coffee or your morning tea or whatever. It's just a nice hearty pastry because that almond flour is full of protein and fiber and really healthy fats. And the semolina just again, it adds kind of another layer of texture and flavor to it. And then we have some uh, fourth a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of baking soda, and one teaspoon of baking powder. I would say normally for baked goods and cakes, you wanna sift the flour and the baking soda and the baking powder all together. But almond meal is, even that it's most fine, it's still so gritty that it's not really siftable. So just use a whisk to make sure that there's no clumps or lumps and that the baking soda baking powder is really evenly distributed. I have the dry ingredients ready to go. So then I'm going to get my wet ingredients in a bowl. So for this cake, I have some leftover ricotta on its last life and some whole milk Greek yogurt. You can just use Greek yogurt if you have ricotta laying around and you, you, know, you used it for a lasagna and now you don't know what to do with the rest of it or something like that. Or even sour cream could work kind of just, it's a yogurt cake, but there are many like variations to it. Also the secret ingredient to this cake is olive oil. I'm using really good fruity, tangy olive oil. It pairs so well with the almonds and the semolina. And then for the sweetener, we're using two types of sweetener. Coconut sugar, you could also use brown sugar, white sugar, any granulated sugar. I like coconut sugar because it has such a caramel 
taste to it. And then we're also going to be using some floral honey. The floral honey complements the olive oil so well. They pair really, really well together. The floral honey is also kind of citrusy and we're adding a ton of citrus into this cake. So it just all marries well together. You could use maple syrup or agave as another uh, substitute for liquid sweetener. And then a hack to honey because it's kind of a tricky ingredient sometimes to work with is the measuring utensil I use to pour out the olive oil into the ramekin or into the bowl, reuse that measuring utensil for the honey and it will slip right out of your bowl or your measuring utensil. Just first grease it with your oil. So measure the oil first is pretty much what I'm trying to say. And so I'm just going to combine the sugar, oil, and honey so that it becomes this granulated kind of, it almost looks like a sugar scrub, <laughs> kind of like a paste. I like to use a rubber spatula to really scrape the sides and make sure you're getting everything really well combined. Next, we're gonna go in with the Greek yogurt and then the ricotta, full fat for both. You could use like at most part skim, but you would not want to use fat free for this. You want the luxurious fat to come through. And now we'll see that the oil doesn't separate from the sugar. It's nice and liquidy. And so lastly, I'm going to add in the room temperature eggs, which is super important. So the yogurt and the ricotta were also at at room temperature, which might sound a little freaky because you're not supposed to have like dairy at room temp, but it's actually super helpful for more consistent batter. So that way the batter isn't, it can be fully combined and you don't get any weird things happening once you put it in the oven or that the batter doesn't mix all the way. So now I am just going to break up those yolks and get this nice and whisked together. Now for my favorite part, we need limone and arancha, we need a lemon and orange. We're gonna take the zest of both of these. You could even add in a lime if you wanted, I'm just not feeling lime, but you can add the citrus of two lemons or citrus of two oranges, but I like to mix the lemon and the orange together. The citrus is actually way, way, way more important than the juice itself. I mean, the juice def definitely has flavor, of course, but there is like three or five times more concentrated flavor of the citrus within the zest. So the zest is the powerhouse of flavor. The way I sometimes like to zest my citrus, this is a terrible, terrible microplane, but I just literally take the top and pull it all the way down. That way you get that whole entire area of the citrus and you don't have to go back and forth a bunch of times because the more times you go back and forth, the more times you risk getting some of the white part, which is the um, pith, which is super, super bitter. I feel like citrus is such a delicious flavor to wake up to in the morning to have for breakfast because it's so bright and happy. Make sure we get every last little zest. And then you can choose if you wanna mix the juices that you add in. We really only need like a two tablespoons of juice. So I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of lemon juice. Sometimes when I'm in a rush, I will cut down the side of the lemon just like this. So that way you're skipping out on, well, okay, there's one seed, but it's way easier to not get any seeds when you cut from all four. Like think about like how you would cut an apple. Squeezing in about a fourth of a lemon or two tablespoons of an insanely juicy lemon here. These lemons were picked from my mom's best friend's tree here in Arizona and oh my God, God, they literally taste like Italian lemons. They're so much more sweet and fragrant when you pick them straight from a tree, a homegrown tree. Like they taste like my Aunt Roberta, so my Zia. She has this whole entire garden filled with like berries and citrus and she has a fig tree and all that stuff. So her lemons always taste so, so good and sweet. Like they could almost be candy. Everything's better in Italy, I mean, if we're being honest. Okay, liquid mixture is ready to go. Excuse me, everybody. Can you get off to the side? Thank you very much. So we don't need the whisk anymore. We're gonna actually just fold the wet into the dry. So pour the wet right in. Make sure to scrape the wet bowl because you want every last drop. And I'm just gonna take from the bottom and kind of fold it like that because you don't want any of the dry mixture sticking to the bottom. You're gonna get like a thick 
pretty thick batter. Okay, so the final two steps before throwing it into the pan, I'm actually going to take blood orange and I'm going to slice it insanely thin to put on the bottom. So the way I like to do it to cut it super thin is I do a little tiny poke for like an eighth of an inch and then I take my knife into that tiny poke and serrate back and forth down to make sure it's as clean of a cut as possible. I'm just going to take it and save the prettiest one for the center. <laughs> need about six slices. You can butter it or grease it with all of it. You can use your fingers to grease it. I'm just gonna spray it with some avocado oil. It's gonna be really, really thick and that is an okay thing. Take the spatula and just so lightly kind of make sure it's nice and even on the top. So I'm gonna throw this into the oven for, a minute, for anywhere between 30 and 40 minutes or until you take a toothpick and insert it into the middle and it comes out with no wetness. There might be a few crumbs on it because I said it would be a very like dense, moist cake, but we don't want any batter. So I'm gonna clean up and then the cake will be ready. So I pulled the cake out of the oven about five or so minutes ago. Yes, I have really, I have espresso hands, uh, as people like to call them, because I can touch really hot things. I am taking just a nice, simple butter knife, pushing against the rim of the, the pan and trying to not hit the cake at all, but just getting it away from the edges. I'm just loosening it from the pan so that way it just falls right out and hopefully the bottom will not stick. You will find out with me. So I'm gonna take a wired rack, take the cake, and hopefully it releases from the pan. It released. All right, are you ready? I'm really scared. I have a feeling it might stick. Oh, it's stuck. Dang it. It was gonna look so pretty, but it's stuck. Arr. Okay, let's, let's fix this. So you're just gonna lightly, lightly take the butter knife and get the pieces to stay intact, just like that. All right, where did you come from? I think you came from here. And we're just going to play with our food. <laughs> you can't even tell, you can't even tell. I fixed it. I glued it all back together. And now I'm eating the crumbs stuck to the bottom of the pan. And they're so citrusy and fruity. And oh my gosh, guys, I'm so excited. So I want this to cool completely to room temperature before we cut into it or anything like that. You can let this cool completely and eat it just as is. You can eat it warm, go for a piece right now. Another traditional thing to do with almond, like semolina type cakes like this is to poke it and add in a simple syrup of like honey and water and sugar, kind of like a baklava simple syrup and let it soak and get super gooey. But this is a breakfast, in my opinion, more of a breakfast type of cake. It's not overly sweet. It has really good ingredients for you in there. So I'm gonna keep it like this, but add a little tiny fun glaze to cover up those mistakes. So I'm going in with just a little bit of powdered sugar. Okay, maybe like a fourth a cup or so. so. I'm gonna go in with the blood orange leftover and just pour that and squeeze it right into and make a mess. Oh my God, it's going everywhere. I hope it doesn't get on my white shirt. It's like this nice slutty color. <laughs> no, it's like this fuchsia. It's so beautiful. As you can see, it's all over my hands. I'm gonna take my handy dandy espresso spoon to kind of stir it all up. As you can see, it's definitely turning into a beautiful pastel fuchsia kind of color. I have my icing ready for drizzling. Cake is done. Let's drizzle some cake.
pouring myself some more tea and I just wanted to say thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or other recipes you'd like to see from me, please leave a comment below. Also comment maybe what your favorite recipe is and which one you are going to try first. Again, thank you so, so much for watching. Your support means the absolute world to me. I hope you have a very, very delicious breakfast and create a very successful day. Ciao.